So here we go, 3-0 to the, to the Dutch, and uh, we've got the women's singles coming up. And, uh, well, can the Canadians get a point on the board? Well, they're relying on Michelle Lee to do that here against Paddy Stoltzenbach. Maybe, maybe, Michelle Lee, who has uh, been as ranked as high as 22 in the world here up against uh, Stoltzenbach. Uh, plays most of her club badminton out in France. Jill Clark has uh, left the commentary position. I will be joined uh, in a moment with uh, Morton Frost. You'll be pleased to hear in a moment or two as we see uh, these two young ladies come out in court. There is uh, Stoltzenbach. And she played in the uh, Sudeman Cup. In uh, 2011, of course, these two countries met in the 2011 Sudamin Cup. She won her singles, did uh, Stoltzenbach beating Jocelyn Coe. But now she's got Michelle Lee to take on. Took uh, some time out after the Olympics, concentrating on her studies. Of course, uh, made the headlines back home with uh, Bruce News on later. And the uh, women's doubles, Alex Bruce, no longer together as a pair, always were going to call it a day as far as that women's doubles partnership were concerned. But obviously, she has uh, excelled as well in the singles, also played in the singles as well at the Olympic Games, did Michelle Lee, where she had uh, the proposition of facing Wang Yi Han. So you'd have to say Michelle Lee here would be... Uh, favorite to come through this match but obviously no guarantees uh, for Canada Canada beating the Netherlands 3-2 last time these nations met well there's no chance of that happening this time with the Netherlands 3 up women's singles and women's doubles were the two disciplines in which the uh, Canadians emerged victorious against France. Well, maybe they can do it again here, but it will be a similar scoreline. They'll lose 3-2. Here's Paddy Stoltzenbach, as you can see. Positive uh, win-loss ratio, 83rd in the world rankings. Had to retire injured in her last event when she was trailing to Chloe McGee at the Dutch International. Semi-finalist this year at the Swedish International. She won in uh, Suriname in uh, 2012. And here is Michelle Lee, 93rd in the world, but uh, that's because she really took a, a little bit of time out. Uh, has only come back in uh, the last few months. Lost in the second round to Wang Yihan at the German Open. Of course, Wang Yihan beating her at the Olympics as well. Came through two qualifying matches at the All England. Lost in the first round to Enrico Hirose in three games. But fair to say she has played higher level than uh, Paddy Stoltzenbach. So maybe Morton Frost, who's uh, looking fresh and absolutely rejuvenated <laughs> after the marathons of yesterday, that uh, maybe Canada can fight back and uh, maybe even win these last two disciplines. I think uh, Michelle Lee is, in my book anyway, she's the favourite. I know, as you very rightly say, she has been out for a while and it's, it's interesting to see what kind of standards she's coming back to. But um, in, in my book, she's, uh, she's a small favourite. We saw uh, our umpire and uh, service judge there, Kelvin Martin of Barbados and Kang Shin Jun of Korea. Just playing for pride now, the Canadians. They've uh, yep, three nil down. Yeah, pretty convincing defeats as well. So no Ladies previous meetings to report. On my right, Canada, represented by Michel Lee. On my left, Netherlands, represented by Patty Stoltenberg. Netherlands to serve. Love all. Play. Service over. One. Love. She 
be born in Hong Kong, uh, Michelle Lee. Won the Canadian national title the last three years, and she's making a pretty confident start here. Yeah. That's a very good smash. Very good smash. As you say, this is early stages of a match, and uh, very often you attempt to make a few mistakes, but uh, that was solid. to the groove, isn't mm -hmm. she? Yeah. Three, love. Can't be unhappy with that. Yeah, Stomps and backs on the thing. Goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would think I so hope this too. doesn't carry on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what she's uh, thinking. Right. But that's a clever move Seven because uh, Michelle has scored uh, on, One, on smashes uh, on her three points and obviously doesn't want to give another chance for that. That's a good tactical move. Service over. So until she's Four. settling down and One. and uh, you know really getting into the match, I think she has to uh, play a lot of downwards shots and, and really do a lot of running and get uh, to shake off uh, the nerves from the beginning. Nervous judgment for Michelle Lee that fell in comfortably. Two. Yeah, yeah, so far Michelle is having a, a much higher yeah. pace than Patty, and that's really showing the difference at the moment. So, Morton, when you left me last night watching Germany oh against oh Malaysia, you said you fancied the Germans would come through they did they I'm had so happy you're mentioning this one of the headlines <laughs> today in the uh, newspaper humiliating is the word that was used for Malaysia and uh, the state of their badminton that's just in yeah I I had the feeling now obviously I, I feel sad for, for Malaysia the host nation of this uh, event it means a lot to have the uh, the host to to continue in a tournament uh, spectators wise and all that so, yes, I feel sorry for them, but uh, honestly, they did not uh, really perform to, to the very best, and uh, I think Germany did, and they took the chance, and especially on the last two ladies' matches, the singles and the doubles, they were standing a good chance. Yeah, now they face Korea, and from a Danish perspective, you must be pretty pleased the way the draw came out. Absolutely, yeah. Getting Taipei, I'm not saying that any match is easy, but it's definitely better than playing China. Yeah, Seven, I mean, if you three. obviously Taipei played brilliantly, they won their yeah. group. Yes. But if you were going to pick one of the winners from the groups, having finished second, I yeah. think Denmark would have chosen that that nation. Yes, I think so. The quarterfinals tomorrow. You, uh, I take it you were watching uh, the badminton at the Olympics, Morton. Yes, I did. And uh, obviously it was a, a big Seven negative seven. story, the, the women's doubles, Michelle Lee yeah. and Alex Bruce, though, were the, the big positives coming out of that negativity, weren't they? Yeah, I, I think so. I think uh, badminton got a lot of uh, good uh, publicity at the end of the day from the so-called scandal. Yeah. But the, the way it was the way it was handled by, by the uh, BWF and then the decisive uh, decisions and all that, I think, uh, was really needed, and it was good they did it. And uh, it meant that this Canadian here that we're watching playing, she was already out of the women's singles, having lost to Wang Yihan. But she lost all three matches alongside Bruce in the women's doubles, and they were out going, doing a bit of sightseeing. They went to the Canadian embassy. They were... You know, having a, you know, yeah. a, a few drinks or two, maybe I don't know. And suddenly, yeah, you're playing. Hold on, yeah. back you come. Yeah, you're playing again. <laughs> Put the drinks down. <laughs> yes. And, and and they played well as well against the uh, they they won their match to get through to uh, the semi-finals. And against the J Japanese pair, they they took a set as well. Oh. Yeah. And then suddenly, you know, they, from going home, they were Six. they were playing for a bronze medal. Eight. Yeah. And in Canada, it, it obviously, the, it became huge headlines and they became celebrities suddenly. Yeah, well, that, that was a, 
complete fluke, but uh, that's just shows what, what can happen now and again. But as I say, it was a good move by the DWF. I, I really support them in, in their decision on, on this. Over 200 kilometers per hour for that smash from Michelle Lee. As well, yeah. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you don't know who Bruce yeah. Lee is, uh, yes, I do. The a big hero, action hero. Yeah. Karate style. Seven, 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 ten. Nine, nine, nine. Bruce uh, up next in the women's doubles. They always going to split that partnership up. That's a good play. Good smash down the line. Good lift. And good she's not crossing that one and opening up the court again because uh, should Michelle get it, she would just have to do all the running on the diagonal. So it was a good decision to go straight. Oh, nice little touch at the end there from Michelle Lee with a drop shot to give her a three-point advantage at the first interval. thought the, the form guy suggested. Eleven, eight, play. Yeah, taking that 3-0 lead early on and shared the point since then. She did. The, the good thing is that that attacking smash down the line first and then that uh, lift was really very cleverly played down to the backhand of Michelle. She doesn't like the, to play the backhand, Michelle. It's easy to see. She's going around the head all the time if she can. And making a bit of a uh, silly mistake there. Yeah, Stinson back and his uh, comeback. You really, really have to watch out uh, when she is uh, in a serving position, especially when she's serving a high serve. Michelle tends to attack it, and she's got to be ready on that one. mistakes in it. Not really timing uh, the shot right. You can hear that she's mistiming it a little bit, so hit it uh, at the top of the frame in the racket. That's better. That's where I don't understand that Michelle is not moving forward immediately. She's catching uh, Patty on that one there. And then forward, forward, forward. She knows it will come at the, at the net somehow. And she's got to be up there and attacking it. Mm, 
some power there, isn't there, from yeah. Stelson back. Look at that, 208. Xiao Li is the fastest of the uh, lady hitters this week so far. What was it, 238? That's right, yeah. And Camilla was 225, something like that. I remember. So she scored uh, twice on that one now. And uh, 13, that seems 16. possibly to be one of the weaker points of uh, Michelle's game. Is that short forehand corner, so maybe... Uh, Patty should try to exploit that a little bit more. So you have to watch out for the attack. It's coming most of the time as soon as the, the high service delivers. When you were playing, Morton, and you were up against opponents that maybe you didn't know that much about, were you able to analyze things tactically on when you're in the game like you are here now or is it easier obviously to do it once you're watching from this kind of angle no um, I, I would say um, my computer was working well yeah i i was uh, really making notice of uh, the things happening but obviously if you haven't played a player before it would take you a little bit longer mostly fi um, maybe five six seven eight minutes to say okay this is the favorite shot and this is where i can exploit a few things and you know you work yourself into it um, but I must say, I, s I spend a lot of time in the stadiums uh, watching all my opponents play before I had to play them. I spend, I, I think I was possibly one of the players spending most time in the stadiums. What, watching in practice? Or uh, in practice, uh, play games, whatever. I was always trying to get as much information as possible. Wow. Interesting, that. Y and you can see why. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's needed. I mean, you often see when uh, there's uh, matches being played, a whole row of video cameras. Yeah, they all lined up. Yeah. But uh, in, in those days when I played, it was not so normal to do that. So, yeah. so you had your little uh, book where you were making notes and, and all that, and you know you were looking in it uh, before you had to play your opponents and so on. Oh, that's neat. That's really nice. She was a little bit late, so she couldn't yeah, really attack it and had that option to play, and she played it beautifully. See, she's late. Well, game points yes. have arrived with that. Six of them for Michelle Lee. That's a good lift from a difficult position. There we go. Well... There's uh, well, a lot of a bit of encouragement for Stoltz and Mack at various points of that game, but in the end, Michelle Lee kind of cruised through at the end, 21 points to 14. opportunity here to get a point back on the board it was a big boost mentioning the Olympics because of course in in, in Canada badminton doesn't really register at all I mean, ice hockey 
and then a few other sports before you get to badminton but you know something to get the headlines it, it just helps with you know national team funding and things like that it certainly does the national sports councils or lot of funds or whatever there is in, in various countries is obviously all looking to to medals at the olympics so again a good shot from from patty again to the same corner the, the short forehand corner of michelle it's definitely a place to explore it. the net very positively. Just long from yeah. Stonson back this time. Not Three, a lot. Not a lot. Good. Mm -hmm. Very nicely played. Yeah. Three, I think it's it's good that uh, Patty is uh, attacking. When, or when she's attacking, she's attacking straight, not uh, getting into trouble of having to run on, on the really long diagonal and all that, not opening up the court. So I think it's it's quite clever. She's attacking straight. I think Patty has to start uh, the rallies trying to open up a little bit and uh, start with uh, attacking that forehand, short forehand corner. That's the one. That's where she's getting in control from there on. That's good play. And another one. So Michelle Lee <laughs> stuck to the task, didn't she? Well. She did. But the idea is right. A good touch at the net, Michelle. She plays some really nice tight Three. net shots. And when she gets in early, she's, she's got a very nice touch to it. Beautiful. points in a row for Michelle Lee. Look back, scoring pretty quickly. I just thought this four. might be a tighter affair given uh, the encouragement that Stolson back had after uh, what was a very solid start for Lee. But 
There's already quite a big gap in this second set. Oh. to the uh, straight down the line to the forehand corner of Patty and uh, setting up good opportunities, control of the rally. Well, Michelle has set up 11-5 uh, up now in the second confirmation of that uh, rally you were just talking about here, Morton. Yeah, good control. I know it's, it's, it's a simple shot uh, Matty, uh, Patty is missing here, but, but it was set up very nicely by uh, Michelle. Yeah, very close to victory now, Michelle Lee, and getting Canada on the board in this match against the Netherlands. Unlucky. Well, well played to the backhand corner of Michelle. Followed up nicely. Just missed it. But again, I think uh, Michelle did quite well on getting out of trouble from the backhand side here. Nice shot. see here it's, it's, um, it's a typical six. trouble area in ladies singles is the, the player who is serving and then having to to get that return from the serve that's usually the biggest problem for all ladies girls when they play singles is actually to get started to get on a roll in the beginning off a rally. As soon, as soon as the rally is going, it's not a problem. Yeah, but it's strange because you watch the serves here. That normally they're, they're flown up high into the sky. Yeah, but now so Michelle is in problem. Now she got out of that okay. But normally, as I say, that is what it, what we call the third shot in ladies singles is a big, big problem. Yeah, but is that because of the serve itself, or no? It's simply because the 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 push off in the legs is simply not strong strong enough so that's something that needs to be sorted in the gym yeah but there's also you know a, a physical difference between men and women Eight, that's good cross back very nicely played if we sat down and did some statistics on this and see how many shots, third shots, were actually missed or played so badly that you would lose the next shot, you, you will see a quite um, scaring statistics. In you, you're places. saying very much more compared to what you'd see in men's singles. Yes. There's not such a big difference as soon as the rally gets going after the third shot but it's the first three shots in the ladies singles where they really have to focus but i always feel that these big high serves as well that doesn't really 
help the cause as well. Bit too much either. Yeah, but I'm telling you, they're so hard to hit when they're coming down like that. That's a good shot. Seven, seven. Ten, seventeen. Again, it was the return that did the damage. And now the return was doing the damage seven, seven. here. Yeah. So you can see, if we start 18, doing st statistics 10. on it, yeah. it, it will show up really, really big. to stay in this match. It's a good attempt. Backhand smash. A little bit unusual in ladies' singles. But it was a very uh, good attempt, actually. And that brings up match points. Oh, she thought well she won it. Well left. through in a good measure here in this women's singles. Paddy Stelton back unable to find enough Back resistance to stop her. 21-14, oh. you heard from the umpire. 21-14, 21-13 the scoreline and it gives Canada their first point in the overall match here against the Netherlands. 3-1 though, they can't retrieve the situation with only the women's doubles still to come. <laughs> 